When the war came, I did bad things. And after the war, I thought nothing of doing bad things. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. And you don't worry about your soul? <sighs> after you walk into a village and you see 50 children all sitting neatly in a row against the church wall, each with their throats cut and their hands chopped off. You realize that the creature that could do this doesn't have a soul. Nico Bellic is not your typical GTA protagonist. Past main characters have always made crime look like just another normal way of life. But not Nico. The journey he takes in GTA 4 is a very somber one. A man consumed by revenge and haunted by the horrors of his past, Nico has struggled to find solace in his life ever since. To understand this more, let's dive deeper into his history in today's video, Who is Nico Bellic? Born in 1978, Nico was brought up in Yugoslavia. While not outright said, it's implied that he had an abusive alcoholic father. He had a brother who died in the Bosnian War, and a mother, Malika Belik, who wanted better for her son. He also had an aunt who was sexually assaulted and murdered sometime after his older cousin Roman Belik left for America. Nico never told him the truth behind his mother's death, instead saying that she died in a house fire. And the house he grew up in went without electricity until he was 12. Nico once had dreams of being an astronaut, but as a teenage soldier, he grew up in the harsh environment of the Yugoslav Wars, which was presumably the Serb-controlled Yugoslav People's Army or its many aligned Serbian paramilitary forces and militias, fighting against the government forces of the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina and Bosnian Cro Croatian Defense Council. The Yugoslav Wars lasted between 1991 and 2001, meaning that Nico was 13 to 23 years old at that time. During the war, he served as a helicopter pilot and an infantryman. It's also implied by Roman that he once drove a tank. Nico's experiences in the war left him with mental scars. Having both witnessed and committed numerous atrocities, it left him cynical, regretful, depressed, and detached. One day, Nico's unit of 15 men most of them being friends back at home, were ambushed by enemy forces, leaving him and two others from that unit, Darko Brevik and Florian Kravik, as the sole survivors. A grief-stricken Nico deduced that it was someone from his unit who sold them out, and made it his life's mission to find out who did it, to get his revenge, and to finally move on. After the war, Roman had already moved to America, while Nico struggled to find a regular job in Europe, and turned to a life of crime in order to support himself for the next decade. He was incarcerated in a European penitentiary for some time, but after his release, he met Ray Bolgren, and began working for his human trafficking ring. But during a smuggling run into Italy, a boat involved in the operation sank in the Adriatic Sea. Everything was lost, but Nico managed to swim to safety. But Ray Bolgren accused Nico of being the cause of the operation going wrong, believing that he not only sabotaged the ship, but also stole his money. And with Ray and his gang's influence within Europe being as strong as it was, Nico joined the Merchant Navy in order to escape them. Afterwards, Nico spent several months on the platypus cargo ship that eventually smuggled him into Liberty City. Which brings us to the events of GTA 4. 
Before docking, Nico has a chat with one of the crew members, Hosan, about his cousin's great success in Liberty City, as well as wanting to start a new life there himself. Roman picks up Nico at the docks and is more than ecstatic to see his cousin again after so long. My cousin is here! Oh, I got the Come on, come on, come on. Whatever. Just take over the world someplace else, yeah, right? buddy. You're in the take goddamn off. way. Screw you! Screw you <laughs> all! On, My man. cousin is here! Nico Bellic! He's the fucking man, bitches! Wrong. Come on, let's go. Uh, to the mansion, huh? Yes, the mansion! <laughs> but when he takes Nico to his home, it is here that Nico finds out that the luxurious life Roman has told him so much about in his letters was all a lie. Roman isn't rich, he doesn't live in a mansion or own any sports cars. Instead, he runs a gritty cab business and lives in a small, messy, roach-infested apartment in Broker. And above all else, he's in heavy debt with loan sharks due to his gambling habits. So Nico finds himself helping his cousin out of his messes and along the way, starts getting set up with his new life in Liberty City. And it is through Roman's connections that he starts dating a woman named Michelle, befriends little Jacob, does some work for Brucey Kibbutz, and even starts working with the Russian mob. More specifically, their obnoxious debt collector, Vladimir Glibov. After Nico works with him for some time, Roman eventually learns that Vlad has been having an affair with his girlfriend Mallory, and Nico was aware of it. So Nico chases after Vlad and kills him over this, but not before being warned that all this could blow up in his face later. Before removing his body, Nico finally tells Roman his real motives behind coming to Liberty City, which is to seek revenge. Soon enough, the two cousins find themselves in hot water with the Russian mob. They get kidnapped and are introduced to Dmitry Raskolov, who wants to kill them for killing Vlad. However, they are spared by Mikhail Faustin, who instead employs Nico. And the more he worked for Faustin, the more exposed he became to the man's insanity. Mr. Faustin, I have the truck. Drive it over to the garage on the corner of Guantanamo and Windmill. Park up inside. Sure. What am I delivering? When it's inside, trigger the explosive. Should blow up good. Maybe you'll be careful on the drive over. It's pretty volatile stuff. Explosive? What the fuck? Leading up to Nico being ordered to kill the son of the Petrovic family's leader, all for suspecting him of being a snitch. With this, Dimitri orders Nico to kill Faustin. But soon after doing the deed, Dimitri then shows his true colors, betraying Nico and revealing his connections to Ray Bolgren. So Nico and Roman flee Hove Beach to start a new life after Dimitri burns down Roman's cab business and apartment. After this, Nico begins working for various associates as a career criminal in Liberty City which includes Manny Escula and Elisabetta Torres, introduced to him by Mallory, as well as the McCreary crime family, the Holland Hustlers, the Pegarino family, the list goes on. Things aren't all okay though, as Dimitri continues to be antagonistic to Nico, even getting Roman kidnapped. Take my cousin, will you? To come on, test me, I'm living here with Roman! A major theme throughout the story is morality, as there are times where Nico is given choices that test the player on morality. Though, should Nico choose to go against his principles all in favor of money, won't have any lasting effects on him until the end of the story. After it's revealed that his girlfriend Michelle, whose real name is Karen, is actually working undercover for the government, Nico then finds himself in forced contact with an international affairs agency front under the name of United Liberty Paper, who blackmails him into doing work for the good of the country. His words, not mine. He also does work for Ray Bacino, a member of the Pegarinos who promises to track down Florian for Nico, which he eventually gets around to doing. 
But when Nico goes to confront Florian at his own house with Roman, it's here that they make a big discovery. It's Bernie now! After I came here, I wanted a complete change, so I became Bernie Crane. What are you doing here? Well, I'm a lifestyle coach, and I teach an aerobics class, and I'm in love. He's married. It's so doomed. Where is Darko? Dead, I hope! Ah. I'm not sure. I, I, I heard he was still in Europe or Switzerland or somewhere. We have to find him. With this, Nico and Bernie become friends again, and Nico even helps him with his own problems from time to time. Nico continues working for the Mafia, and after some time, his day finally comes when he soon gets a phone call from the ULP, informing him that they finally located Darko and are holding him at the airport. He collects Roman, and on the way to the airport, he begins to express weariness of being a criminal, questioning if he'll ever be anything more than just a killer. They finally arrive at the airport, and this is the part where we get possibly the most powerful scene in the whole game. You remember me? I don't know you. Yes, you do. I'm the one who survived. Nico. Hello. Reci mi zašto. Zašto? Zato što smo bili prijatelji. Svi smo odrasli zajedno. Mitar, Dragan, Goran, Mio. Mogu da nastavim. Svio, ha? We were friends, but I had other friends! Friends that Goran and his guys killed. My fucking neighbors! Because of what? Because of shit! Lies! Fucking lies! So that makes it okay to stab your friends in the back? Shown to be shit. You make strange choices. Fuck you! <laughs> strange choices? How much? <laughs> A thousand. <laughs> you kill my friends for one thousand dollars. How much do you charge to kill someone? You ruined me, you fuck! This is the moment Nico has been waiting for since the war. To bury the man who turned his life upside down. Twisted him into something he didn't ask to be. With the chance to finally avenge his unit. His friends. And as the player, you get to choose which fate Darko should suffer. Not much of a difference is made if you choose to either kill or spare him. The only thing that changes is the dialogue between Nico and Roman as they head back home after the confrontation. But in short, to kill Darko means revenge feels empty. To spare him means revenge isn't worth it. Either way, Nico doesn't necessarily get the closure he wanted. So after parting ways with Roman, Nico meets Jimmy Pegarino at a strip club, where he talks Nico into doing a heroin deal with Dimitri. Nico is understandably reluctant, and the conclusion of the storyline depends on the player's choice. Should Nico abandon his principles and work with Dimitri one last time? Or should he put an end to the man who's given him and his loved ones nothing but grief since coming to LC? Well, if revenge is chosen, Nico will fight his way into the same cargo ship that brought him into Liberty City and confront Dimitri who already stole the heroin and is loading the ship with it. With Dimitri finally executed for all he's done, this just leaves the Pegarino family in a very bad place. Furious over Nico's decision, Pegarino crashes Roman's wedding attempting to assassinate Nico, 
only to end up accidentally shooting Kate McCreary, Nico's new girlfriend and the only daughter of the McCreary family. To avenge her death, Nico, as well as Roman and little Jacob, chase after Jimmy all around Liberty City before finally killing him at Happiness Island. Despite Nico's grievance and guilt over getting close to Kate, he still has Roman and his friends. It's also revealed that Mallory is pregnant and Roman promises to name the baby in honor of Kate if it's a girl. Nico may have lost a potential girlfriend, but there is the sensation that things will be okay. But should the player choose Deal, Nico attends the meeting at the docks with Phil Bale, only to find out that Dimitri has once again betrayed him and stole the heroin, leaving him and Phil to have to steal the money from the buyers by force. Despite this, Nico decides not to go after Dimitri from being fed up with pursuing revenge. This becomes a very big mistake on Nico's part, because Dimitri does not stop there. He sends a hitman to kill Nico at his own cousin's wedding, only Roman ends up getting shot instead. So Nico goes with little Jacob and chases after Dimitri all around the city in a similar manner as with Jimmy until they finally put an end to him at Happiness Island. And as for Kate, even though she didn't attend the wedding from being disappointed by Nico's choice, she gives her condolences after hearing about Roman's death and promises to always be there to support him. But a few in-game days later, she breaks up with him over the phone not wanting to start a family in the unsafe environment that is Liberty City. So Nico not only loses his cousin, but his girlfriend as well. And the only people he has left are his other friends. He also decides to take the role of a father figure after learning that Mallory is pregnant. Although Nico doesn't make a physical appearance in GTA 5, he is referenced a few times in the narrative of the story. During the planning of the jewelry heist, Lester mentions him to Michael. There was a, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but uh, he went quiet. The implication is that Nico has since left his life of crime behind. If Packy McCreary is chosen as a crew member of the Polito Bay heist, he will mention Nico when recounting the Bank of Liberty heist. I ran the crew. It was me, my brother Derek, God rest his soul, my pal Michael, God rest his soul, and another boy, Nico, who's probably dead too. And lastly, if Michael is still alive after story completion, there's this one point where we see his family gathered around at the dinner table with his son Jimmy on his laptop. If you zoom in closely to the laptop, you will see that Jimmy is watching Nico's Life Invader page. Here we see that Nico now lives in Broker, working as a taxi driver for Roman's cab business. He is still friends with little Jacob, Mallory, and Brucie, and there's even a happy birthday note to Roman. So either this is just an Easter egg, or it's an implication that the revenge choice in GTA 4 was the canon ending. Nico Bellic is without a doubt the most compelling, complex, and well-written main character that the GTA series has ever had. Following him throughout his story, you'd either find yourself sympathizing with him, or being frustrated with him. Self-aware that his lifestyle choice is a burden on himself and others and barely doing anything to leave it all behind. But it's important to remember one thing. His entire existence has been completely defined by crime. From being exposed to so many unspeakable cruelties for far too long, he's doing the only thing he knows how to do just to survive. He doesn't know the first thing about being normal. He doesn't know the first thing about being positive. All that stuff is just foreign to him. And his past is ingrained in him to the point where he fears this is all he'll ever be. So looking into his history, can you really blame him? 
Imagine for a moment being brought up in a world full of nothing but darkness. Can any of us really say that we'd be any better than Nico? Could one really say it's that easy to overcome? That being said, I genuinely don't believe Nico Bellic is truly evil. He is broken for sure, but not beyond repair. As long as he has the support of his loved ones, there is always the possibility of him changing for the better. And if this Life Invader page is really canon to the narrative, then it's refreshing to see that Nico was finally able to find peace and move on, even though it's off screen. And that's the history of Nico Bellic. If you like this video, leave a comment telling me your thoughts.